Good morning, class, and welcome back to History of Things I Like 101. I hope everyone has done their homework that I assigned over the weekend in playing the visual novel Snoot Game. Like I told you guys on Friday, you will need to have beaten the game fully and shown me the change menu screen as sign of proof. If you have not finished the game or played it at all, please raise your hand. Alright, it seems everyone has done their homework besides one. Uh, Francisco, please take your laptop and go out in the hallway to play the game. Not having played the game before today's lesson will hurt your experience, and because of that, I will not let anyone listen to today's lesson until it's completed. Francisco, you can grab the information from the description box. I have also included a guide, so you can catch up with the rest of the class a lot easier. Alright, before we start today's lesson, let's just do a simple refresher, just so it's more fresh in your guys' mind as we go over today's lesson. So, Snoot Game, what is it? Become one freaky creatures, monster party, eyes of yellow, scales and feathers, tails and tethers, turn the lights off, bend the nightmare, you control it, our fool dodger, easy does it, shut the closet, get under the covers, snakes and lovers, turn the lights off, everybody likes to get taken to turn. Snoop game. A visual novel set in a land full of colorful dinosaurs, cavemen, and humans, who we'd like to call them skinnies. With the main setting being at Volcano High, a high school where the main character Anon is transferred to after a life-changing event, there he would meet Fang, a goth girl who is also the main love interest, who is the leader and singer of a band, along with her two friends, Reed the drummer, who is the main comedy relief and average stoner. And Trish, the main bass player, who, depending on who you ask, is the main villain of the story. The visual novel also comes with a wide cast of support characters, like Stella, an anime weeaboo who is into tarot reading, which class, if you have fallen for her, please feel free to join up for the Stella cult. The sign-up list is in the hallway on the bulletin board. Followed by her friend Rosa, a Spanish-speaking, raptor-jesus-wielding dino who is the leader of the gardening club. Along with them is Fang's brother, Nusser, who has the same problems of an Asian child, while caring way too much for his sister. Which leads us to the last main character being Naomi, Nusser's overly controlling girlfriend that sees Anon as a tool to make Fang quote-unquote normal. And with that out of the way, we can now get into the history of Snoot Game. Cross the diamonds, twinkle brightly, dance in darkness, blow the nights off, sleepy child, spark desire, walk the fire. So, where do we begin to talk about Snoot Game's history? Well, for that we actually have to go back before the start of Snoop Game's timeline. All the way back in the year 2012, all the way in Canada, with the studio director Salim Dubis and Drossen Zigbeg, the lead programmer, both of them created a company known as Co-op. A company that is an artist run and owned company where everyone at Co-op makes the same salary at least according to the article that I read. According to the article, an experience is an advantage, posted from Game Industries. The founders had minimal experience in game making, but pointed out their outside background as a help to the studio more than a hindrance. Since they started, they created 10 to 15 prototype games, with two games ending up in full production, but being cancelled later on. During this time, up until Genog, their first successful game, they stayed afloat by being a work for hire company. According to Debus, they took their work for hire very seriously and did a really good job with it while trying to put their mark on it as much as possible, which isn't always the case with a lot of work for hire contracts. Which basically meant that they turned down contracts that would be financially lucrative because it would compromise on the art direction or design on how they would view the game. They did work for some well-known companies as being a partnership, 
Some of them would be Film Board of Canada, Cartoon Network, and making Rig BMX series, a mobile game of Rigby from regular show, basically as a bicycle. And then they would also work with Rocky Cat Games, which created a game called Dad by the Sword. With that out of the way, we fast forward then to 2017. Co-op would release GNOG, a puzzle video game for the PlayStation 4, iOS, Microsoft Windows, and Mac OS. The game is a 3D puzzle set in a tactile world of toys and secrets. Point, click, grab, poke, spin, pull, and play. Basically a giant bop -it toy of the charming monster set until you explore the hidden worlds that are stuck inside of them. Filled with eye-catching designs, playful interactions, and a rich, reactive soundtrack, the handcrafted heads come to life in either standard play or in VR. This game would win only two awards, one being the Art Direction MIGF in 2016, and the Best of the Mix during 2015 E3 rewards. A couple years later, in 2018, co-op would hire Kate Gray for Winding Worlds as the narrative director. It also seemed around 2018 is when their first visual novel, Goodbye Volcano High's original concept would start, with Kate Gray being the narrative director for it. Two years later, on May 15th, 2020, co-op would release Winding Worlds, their next big game. A puzzle game posted to Apple Arcade where the player has to solve puzzles on different worlds in order to save themselves while finding lost souls hidden in each level. The game has calming gameplay with dynamic and dreamy musical experience composed by Debu, along with having a lovable mysterious cast of characters. Unfortunately, I'll never be able to try that because I will not touch Apple in a about a 50 foot radius. All right. Now that we have a little bit about co-op's background, at least the more important things out of the way, we can now begin to talk about the Big Bang that is Snoop Game. Only a month would pass since the release of Widening Worlds when on June 11th, 2020, PlayStation would have an event called Future of Gaming, which it would show off the different trailers for upcoming games for their platforms. In this case, they would release the reveal trailer for Co-op's next big game, Goodbye Volcano High. You ever feel like you're just waiting for a sign? To do that thing you've always meant to do. Sometimes I feel like I'm just standing on the edge of doing great things. Something's holding me back. Maybe it's just nerves. Maybe it's the fear that I'll never be as good as what I imagined. Dinosaurs evolved into so bipedals. The meteor the never hit. <laughs> but if we've got nothing else to lose, might as well jump. The music's so fucking cliche. I love this game. I'm getting this game. Chat, I'm streaming this game. <laughs> Everybody in chat say L. <laughs> Nobody cares. This game is fucking cringe. <laughs> Volcano High. What a fucking name for high school. Volcano High. <laughs> 2021, so it's next year too. Nobody cares, dude. When the trailer would be released, it would have different reactions across the gaming community, mainly people making fun of the game. From the weird character design to the bad animation shown in the trailer, it would get some people thinking it would be good, but they want to hold their breath. And only a very small amount of people were really excited about the game. The trailer wouldn't be the only thing that would hurt GVH's chances though. After one Twitter user by the name of BlueIsRose430 discovered the narrative director's previous works on a website called Ataku. Kate Gray, the narrative director for Good Bible Kano High, was a freelance writer for the website and had been posting very questionable articles 
These articles mainly consisted of gaming reviews on uh, Sims events and other games dealing with sex, with each of our article having some form of NFSW images along with it. Her other articles I literally could not talk about without losing my teacher's license. However, we will talk about only one of her articles, the one that Twitter took the most issue with. This article would be literally titled, Animated Video Game Porn Could Be A Lot Sexier And Less Gross. Which basically started with Kate Gray going over to your friend's house to get drunk and watch different types of animated porn from different medias. The article first starts out with her watching a animated porn video of Harry Potter characters boning other students or having the teachers bone the students. And she goes into a lot more detail than I would have liked for a fucking article, but since, yeah, it was not a pleasant article to read. Not only that, but she provided pictures that were not censored whatsoever along with her article. Uh, and mind you, the characters from the Harry Potter series, at least in the book, or somewhere between the ages of 11 and 17. So, still very much underage. Uh, after, she after she talked about the Harry Potter videos, she then moved on to talking about a Zelda animated porn video from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild about Zelda being railed by, you know, a couple of goblins. And then to finish up the entire article, she talked about two porn videos from Pokemon and one of them had Misty and Twitter took basically an entire shitstorm on just this one article and questioning on Kate Gray's performance for being a narrative director. And this was not exactly good for co-op to have. However, nothing would come about it too soon until the following day, when on June 12th, 2020, Kate Gray would come out with a Twitter thread giving her apology about writing the article, saying this. So at least according to the tweet, she stepped away on her own accord. However, two years later, from a tweet from Jacob, a programmer for co-op, said in a reply, No, she was fired ages ago. With Kate Gray now being gone and taken off the project, co-op would need to find a new narrative director. Which they would, and they would announce it on July 16th, 2020, when they would announce a partnership with Sweet Baby Inc. with Ken Blair being the new narrative director. This would become one of the reasons for GVH's first delay the following year. Alright, well now we are officially all, completely all done talking about co-op stuff for a really long time. And we can finally get on to what everyone wanted to talk about today is Snoop Game. And boy am I excited for this. And to start off the thing off is there's going to be a lot of different eras for the uh, for Snoop Game. This first era is going to be called Pre-Snoo. Pre-Snoo happened between June 11th, when the reveal trailer was posted, and June 14th. In the depths of the internet, 4chan resides. The website came out in 2003, and it's been a hotbed of internet users getting justice on companies, memeing, bullshitting, and expressing their own personal views. The website is a messaging board where everyone Everyone is quote unquote an anonymous or what they like to call themselves anons. Anyone can come and post something to the message boards or get information. The following day after the reveal trailer on June 12th, 2020, an image was posted on 4chan's video game category or slash B. It was an image of Fang from the trailer with just one simple caption. I am so fucked up. This thread would produce a few well-known images that are continuing to be shared to this day, but mainly this thread consists of very off-topic, very weird fetish shit, and other stuff I literally cannot talk about here, or again, I will lose my teacher's license. However, this thread would come along with two images that would literally be credited 
as being the reason there would be two uh, endings made for Snoot Game. The college has told me though, if anyone wishes to review the sources to learn more about what is covered in today's lessons, uh, please be advised as there are some things I'm not even allowed to speak about. If we remember the 31st rule, the first true fan art will most likely be porn of said media. And in this case, the first fan image posted was a naked image of Fang, followed very closely behind by one of Trish. Uh, one of them, I will say, is more tasteful than the other one, uh, but I'll let you guys uh, figure that one out. If we scroll down, we get to the first important image of this thread. The image depicts Fang on a few students at Volcano High with a pistol and a shotgun in their hands and Nusser, Trish, and Rosa dead in the background. Uh, this current version, made by the same artist as the original, but it would be called the German version. Note, it depicts the dead students as robots, nerf guns, and confetti. If you want to see the original, I have left where you can find it in the description box for you to look for yourself because I would like to not get in trouble with the college. This next image shows Feng that is completely different than how she is shown in the trailer. Some of you might have put things together and realized that this image reminds you of Fending 3. The image shows Feng having reverted back to normal being, from being a goth and has accepted the great raptor Jesus as her savior. Feng looks happy in this image considering it's fan drawn, but in the actual game, if you guys remember, she isn't exactly happy. Anyways, we can go over each of the endings in another lesson if you guys truly want to cover them in greater detail. Comparing them to the original script that we'll actually get to learn about. Uh, remember, we do have a comments box where you can vote or leave questions on today's lesson, and I'll get back to you guys during the next class. With that, we wrap up the era of pre-Snoot and can move on to proto-Snoot era. Proto-Snoot does have a lot more to talk about, and it is important to take notes on this, or you will have to read the source material yourself. I would say heaven help you with the rat's nest that is 4chan, but one of the Snoot historians has done a great job at keeping track of all of this information. And it's also what I've been using for today's lesson. Proto-Snoot wouldn't last very long, but it would have the most important things that would happen for the game. This era would last from June 14th to June 19th, when it was announced Cape Mon Studios would start development of Snoot Game. So let's start this era off. June 14th is the accepted date from historians for the start of Bruto Snoot area, but there could be still some debate as they could have started out much sooner considering the trailer came out in June 11th. We do know though, the first documented event that would cause a little bit of a stir in the community would happen on June 16th. A thread was pinned to slash V, leading to more memeing and further making fun of Fang's character design from GVH. Before moving on, though, there is something of note that must be talked about. While 4chan, like I said, is a platform of quote-unquote anonymous users, there is some form of moderation that takes place, which these people are called Jannies. With everything that has moderation, there comes with issues with corruption from the moderators. And 4chan has had a lot of traffic, so there's been a lot of cases. In this case, a user would be publicly banned without warning for posting this image to 4chan. Which, this post is a far cry from being even remotely bad compared to other stuff that's been posted in some of the threads. The community reacted with a mix of responses, some calling the Jannies based, some wondering why he was banned for it, and others agreeing with the post saying that furries are becoming an issue in slash V. One thing though that I did notice when looking through the threads is some of the users thought that the Jannies were in support of Fang or GVH, which that would be true at least for now. June 17th, 2020, a thread would be posted asking what people are, were expecting from Goodbye Volcano High. And from now on, it would be called GVH because I'm getting tired of saying it. While some people would just make more memes, there was one user working on something in the background and he would need help with it. A job board would be posted asking where people to make sprites for Fang, Anon, some teacher sprites, 
the purple dino fang's brother and some orange dino sprite they would also be looking for graphics which one graphic would be fang being laughed at at a party another one would be for the good ending where well so fang is saved and is now anon's wife graphic for the bad ending the school shooting and a graphic for a neutral ending which would be a breakup Surprisingly enough, there were a few early takers in wanting to handle the Fang and Anon sprites. Along with the job board, they would also post the reply, which basically read, Also, we have attempt Discord. Pros, work closer on the project. Cons, it's Discord. Don't be afraid to help. Even if your abilities are mundane, we need everything we can get. With this, the first signs of the Discord was talked about openly. However, like most things in history, some stuff would be lost forever as the Discord can no longer be tracked down. We don't really know what would have been found in that Discord, but what we do know is the Discord would have been the diving board for the developers of Snoop game. While continuing the thread, the Snoop historians would discover something that was really exciting to me. A post simply asking for a guy with experience with visual novel engines, posted with an image. This image though, however, would be accepted as the very first concept art from Snoot Game. Though the dialogue changed, it still matches the same concept, with the concept art saying as the follows, Ah, oh, you're right, Fang. I should have known from your long hair, slender figure, eyelashes, and feminine voice that you were actually non-binary and I shouldn't refer to you as a girl. My bad. And for those that have caught on, this will sound really similar to the option that's in the game, which goes as the following. Sorry, Fang, I should have known from your Finneman appearance and dress that you are, in fact, non-binary. As you can see, they still have parts that match with each other, and both would fit in the same context of the dialogue. If you switch the concept art's text with what's in the game currently, it would still match with that option. Also, another fun note, it doesn't matter which of these two options you choose, it doesn't affect the point system, so it's just an illusion of choice, which I do find quite funny for the game. A couple minutes later, the user would post this image as a short fanfic dealing with Anon. If you post down, another user would reply to a piece of fan art with a completely different short fanfic. This thread would literally be a bunch of different users creating different stories seemingly at random, and then replying to each other's stories with some users stitching together the stories already made into one joint story. This simple act of fun would create the original script for Snoot Game, which thankfully they would save it to a pastebin, which the Snoot historians were able to rediscover and document. The original script would get to have some parts added to the game, while other sections were changed later. I won't really cover the original script in today's listen, but please feel free to grab a copy of it in the description box. The next day on June 18th, another thread was created and a user would post a drawing which depicts Spears as a principal with Fang in his office. The character originally starred in the 2019 animated series Primal, where the main character is called Spears who is a caveman and his dinosaur companion is called Fang, which is a T-Rex. It was an early joke on the threads when GVH was talked about, with having users post pictures of the T-Rex saying that this is the real thing. June 19th. According to the ending credits of the game, this is the day the official development of Snoot Game started. This would be the day Cave Maman Studios would officially go from just a group of random 4chan users to a real group of developers. This would lead to another event on the same day that would ch forever change the direction of Snoot Game. With Kamamon Studios wanting to take this visual novel more seriously, a writer for the game would post the pastebin script to Slashlit. Slashlit just being the place for users to post fanfics and other stories for users to give feedback and enjoy. The chain of replies would go as the following, with the writer first posting this post on Slashlit. Anons on Slash V are using this green text as a skeleton for a visual novel about Volcano High. That garbage looking PS5 launch title. I'm told the romance is disjointed and doesn't follow an organic path. How can I make it more natural? Random user. Spent more time than I should have looking up why this was even a project. Yeah, I get you facts are doing the whole waifu bit, 
but it's kind of the problem here. Waifus don't make for an interesting or relatable romance because it's always inherently about the fantasy aspect of a girl falling head over heels for you because she was secretly in love the whole time. There's no change, there's no development. I'm excusing minor details like the first and second person because this is green text, but fuck, all endings reek of misunderstanding of what's wrong with her and what's required to fix it. Romance or not, approaching it from the angle of seeing flaw and fixing it will help a lot with the underlying dissonance. Unless you all want to make a fantasy game where you get a perfect trad waifu and live happily ever after because all she really needed was you, then by all means, just don't pretend like this is anything from the original game's MO with a different coat of paint. With the writer replying back, I see, how would seeing the flaw in fixing it go down? Another user would reply, alright, you get, kind of get this attention seeking thing, but this is much of a, but this is much as a symptom as the gender thing, not the root cause. Bio says she's neglected by her parents because her brother is perfect and gets everything right. He's a goody two shoes with grades and parents, popular. I'm guessing that other girl is his girlfriend too. Feng's response is to adapt, I need nobody attitude and has basically bought an off-shelf personality and identity to compensate. People like this do not feel like they have an agency. These store-bought identities from ideologies like the Alphabet Club people and race baiters only offer the feeling of validation without the essential step of self. This behavior you can find in you baiting on 4 channel, which is an attempt to find some semblance of I exist, instead of realizing you can get the affirmation from the outside. Fang adopting trad wife, sticking with high school attitudes or shooting up the school isn't fixing the problem of her gaining agency. You can fix this by having Anon be there as an example, a self-actualized person. He shouldn't be there to fuck her or save her. Every choice that's not purely cosmetic should be set up at, with an intent to help her gain agency. She feels like she's always compared to her brother, never judged on their own merits or personhood. So she substitutes this with an identity that comes with excess baggage. It shouldn't matter if she's goth or bisexual, as long as this has come from within, not because this will make up for a lack of personhood. This is why trade wife is missing the point a bit. It's substituting color hair and pronouns for Jesus and prayer. She still does it because it's an identity without any real substance or self behind it. Or maybe I'm talking out of my ass and all, all she really did need was a man to fuck the degeneracy out of her. You guys do you. With that last reply being the greatest of them all, as the devs would have a read me file thanking this one random anon on slash lit by saying the following. Special thanks to the random anon on slash lit sa who saved this project from poor writing af after we submitted a beta version of our script. Whoever you are, you changed the writing direction from shitposty pandering garbage to genuine story that outperforms what our competitors could do. Whoever you are, be proud of your critique and continue to critique. Storymakers need valiant anons like you. Sadly, this would only be in the first version of Stoot Game, so if you want to see the other versions, I will have more information on them in the description box. As in the other versions that would come, it would be either removed or forgotten. However, it wouldn't be forgotten by the historians. And if that person is somehow listening to today's lesson from everyone at the college, we really thank you. And now finally, with all of that done, the era of Proto Snoot would come to an end and the development of Snoot Game would continue with a new story design and a new sense of meaning. Which, this is a little funny to me, that GVH would get a brand new narrative director after Kate Gray, and now Snoot Game would get a more meaningful story thanks to some random guy on 4chan. Both games got a rewrite, and both games changed for better or for worse. And with that, we can now move on to more of a calming era. The era of shitposting. June 2020 to May 13th, 2021. During this era, the devs would keep everything secret and not post anything. This era mainly had people shitposting on GVH, but also seems some people started to forget about the game itself as the news started to die down. Cavemon Studios, though, wouldn't just be working on Snoot Game during this time, as some of their devs might not have experience with visual novels, 
they decided to do a test game. And this test game would be called She's a Bit Sluggish. The game would only be about 10 minutes long roughly and have four different endings. It was developed for the Valentine's Day game jam called Love Jam for February 2021. This event would be hosted by 4chan for 4 chaners who had one week to develop a game and send it in. She's a Bit Sluggish would be their game to be able to test their writing, music, and programming skills. And the end result really wasn't a bad game. But the characters you could play having enough background, you could really understand them while also enjoying the overall story. It might have been short, but the fact that the game could have moments I was laughing my ass off to is something I very much enjoy. As the months went on, Capon wouldn't stay quiet forever about Snoop Game. As on May 13th, a user had posted an image saying it was an official leak from GV8. This would then start the next era, and that era would be called the Era of Leaks. Era of Leaks, May 13th to June 4th, 2021. Before beginning this era, one thing important needs to be remembered. Goodbye Volcano High Makers Co-op had not said that they would delay the game at this time. This wouldn't happen until later that year in August, meaning Cavemon devs leaked images of Snoop Game that people honestly thought came from GVH itself. With many of the users saying that it's Jacob or someone else working for co-op that's been posting or leaking from the game itself, it was the perfect plot to build up hype without calling themselves out. Since this era is kind of short and this lesson is getting close enough to its end, but it's also kind of long, I decided which what the hell, which throw in a small little mini game for this era. And for that, I'm going to be showing you guys images that were from the 4chan threads that are considered leaks from Goodbye Volcano High. Some of them were used in the game, others were just basic fan art. Others were things that seemed like they'd be in the game, but apparently they weren't ever in the game. Or they could have been in an earlier version. I don't know. I'm just going off of what I know for the last version of the game. Anyways, it's time to now play Guess That Snoop Game. Let's start with the first image. This first image depicts Fang crying, looking sad, looking back at someone. Now, was this image used in the game? A fan art? And if it was used in the game, where at was it used in the game? You have a couple seconds to guess. If you said that this is Fang from ending one towards the end when she is looking back at Anon, you would be correct. And God, I am sorry for bringing back those really sad memories. However, we will be coming back to this image though, however, as it is not only the first official leak from the devs, it would then lead to a reply from the devs themselves, which would then lead to the next era. All right, let's move on to the next image. Hmm, this image seems to be kind of a tough one. Seems to be Trish crying, but she seems very angry with someone saying, what's wrong, Trish? Don't you like sitting on people? I wonder what this image could be. Place your guesses. If you said that this is not in the game and it's just normal fan art, you would be correct. However, what exactly is the full image? That is for you to decide. Alright, this next image seems familiar. It shows Naomi and Nusser looking at someone. If you said that this is from the very beginning of the game, when both of them are looking on Anon after he whiffs the bench and slams directly on his ass, you would be correct. And yes, this was used in the game. Next image. This one is a little bit of a tough one. It shows Feng in her happy pose. So, was it used in the game? Or this is fan art? If you said that this was used in the game, you would be correct. This seems to be an image of when Fang was serving her detention working for the gardening club and it's after when Rosa said that she was going to cook for them and Fang was very excited about that. It's also a very cute image of Fang. I have to admit. Alright, moving on to the fourth image. 
This one is also another tough one. It does indeed seem to be Stella. However, look very closely because it may or may not be in the game itself. If you said that this image was not in the game, oh my god, how great is your memory? Because you would be correct. There is not a single time when Stella has the background of the chain link fence that seems to be from the rooftop. And finally, the last image. This one might be a little bit tough, but for those good old snooters, you'd be able to sniff this out pretty well. If you said that this is Rose's tail, you would be correct. Well, that was really fun. I'm glad you guys were able to play along with the game. There's probably a lot more leaks out there, but I just picked those leaks because I thought it was going to be a little fun. All right, and with that, let's get back to the lesson. Going back to this lovely image, this image would be very important to remember because not only was it the first image leak, like I said before, it would also lead to a dev replying to someone calling him Jacob, basically saying, that you guys will know something big by June 4th. And what happened on June 4th? Well, let's get into the last and most current era. That would be the era of Snoop Game. The era of Snoop Game, June 4th, 2021 to current day. The curtains would finally be pulled back with Cavemon finally saying an announcement. I regret to inform you that you've been lied to. These images are not leaks. Or goodbye Volcano High anyways. Along with this post, you would also have the very first trailer that would be announced for Snoop Game. You ever feel like you're just waiting for a sign? To do that thing you've always meant to do. Sometimes I feel like I'm just standing on the edge of doing great things. But something's holding me back. Maybe it's just nerves. And with that, Snoop Game would finally come out of fighting. Users would still remember, surprisingly, that something was being worked on from last year's, would instantly say that this would be the superior version of Goodbye Volcano High. Only a couple hours later, Capemon would release a website link to download the first version of Snoop Game, which was only for Windows at the time. The game would soon release their itch.io page and other versions would be released as the months went on. The game itself would be well received pretty much with open arms from the community. With over the next four days, the threats would be posted to slash V would reach their bump limit. Bump limits are set when a post reaches a certain amount of replies, it would stop being at the top of the feet. In this case, the bump limit for slash V is 500 replies for one post. This is a feat you wouldn't think a parody game made by people no one has ever heard about could achieve. Especially since it was a parody game of a game that not many people really thought was anything that was good. It would continue to have excess until the mods of Slash V would come wielding their hammers. However, this would backfire on them as it would only lead to a stronger reaction. Just like back in June 16th, when a user was banned during the GVH thread, the reaction this time between the Anons and the Jannies would be stronger than ever. As the game's popularity started to rise, the moderators started cracking down on the threads even harder before they could even reach their bump limit. Due to these issues, 4chaners would have no choice but to move to slash trash to continue to make threads for Snoop Game, with the first thread being made and pinned to slash trash, but unpinned within an hour. And that was until June 8th, a thread would be created by a moderator, and this thread would be sticky to slash trash, with users basically now calling slash trash slash Snoop. June 10th, 4chan would host an event called V3, a play onto E3, a game reward show. Since COVID-19 back in 2020 would cancel different events around the world, including some gaming events, 4chan brought it upon themselves to host oh, their own I game rewards with Very the one and only host, Kermers. Dr. Eggman. Snoop Game would be submitted to V3, which would also be the reason for the game having some of its animation off as said in their release post. 
Though, out of the 13 contestants in Ronnie West's new game, the game would get most soulful, most going to make it, and best of show reward. Which, even though that this was an event hosted by 4chaners, the fact that so many 4chaners would vote on Snoop Game for these different rewards, even though it was just something that 4chan decided to make for themselves, showed just how much the community was invested into this game. And it was just the start. June 16th, 2021, Cavemon would host a four hour long Q&A, which the Twitch stream would be sadly taken down later. This would only leave with someone's rough transcript of all of the answers during the Q&A. And yes, while the questions aren't able to be found again, all of their answers can be roughly made out on what they're answering to. And that also will be in the description box for anyone that wishes to enjoy themselves reading through it. July 2nd, 2021, the users of Slash Trash and Slash VG would create their own covers of Out of My League by Fitz and the Tantrums. However, I won't play it until the end of today's lesson, as we do have some more things to cover before wrapping up today. However, it is a pretty damn good song. July 29th, 2021, that same thread that was made in pin on Slash Trash all the way back on June 8th would finally be coming to an end with a moderator locking and unlocking the thread. This announcement would trigger the same response as Goldie Roger when he told the world where his treasure lies. The four trainers would come together and create multiple different Discord servers. Some, like Slash New and the Spanish Club, just to name a few. However, not all would be lost as the four trainers would come together and create Slash Fang Fridays as a pitch to be able to keep having threads be sticky to slash trash long after the thread would be taken down. Then, on August 1st, 2021, the sticky would finally be taken down with Amberlight's brilliance playing in the background until its final moments. However, not all would be lost as on August 6, 2021, the first ever Fang Friday in history which would continue not only on 4chan threads, but to all snoot surfers would happen. During the time of the announcement, the peak times were over 200% posting and over half the port's activity is in the sticky thread were at a blistering 25 posts per minute. At the time of ending the thread, the thread would have 67,128 posts, making it the third largest sticky on the site's history, only behind the 2016 and 2020 elections on Slash Poll. It would still be one of the biggest threads ever. It would be a testament to how much people loved and enjoyed Snoop Game as a whole, and how much they enjoyed the community that they formed together. So, some of you guys might be wondering, where was Goodbye Volcano High in all of this? Well, as we said earlier in the lesson, on August 19th, 2021, co-op would announce their first delay for the game, citing COVID-19 being their main issue and the rewrite of the game's story from their new writers from Sweet Baby Inc. The game's release window would change to the summer of 2023, with them releasing a brand new trailer in February, stated that the date would be for June 15th. That would, however, again not be the final date, as in May, they would change the release date again to August 19th, 2023, leading to a new rise in hype for Snoop Game, as YouTubers saw this opportunity to compare GVH with Snoop Game. Before we can finish up today's lesson, we do have to talk a little bit about some of the issues that came about because of Snoot Game. Snoot Game wouldn't just have the Janies to worry about though, as either co-op or another anonymous user would send a DMCA to their itch.io page. A DMCA is a Digital Medium Copyright Act, and even though Snoot Game is made with its own sprite and story and protected by the US parody laws, HIO team would take it down on September 9th, removing it from their website forever. Capemon's main website though would still be up for Snoop Game, but their HIO would allow more people to find the game a lot easier. Finally, we can wrap up today's lesson, and thank you all for sticking around, it's been a long one. We can finally talk about the end of Snoop. 
Snookin would get a total of 8 patches since its release, with the last patch being January 6, 2023. Only two of these patches are important of note though, as they had the biggest impact for the game. The first patch of note was patch 6, when Cavemon would update and create brand new CGs for ending 3 and 4, along with them creating new epilogues for ending 3 and 4, and adding all the bonus chapters in the game. The new epilogue for ending 3, however, would cause a stir in the community with one of the writers adding events from his own personal life. These were added to the transcript as a joke and was marked to not be added, but a mistake would be made which would have these lines added to the game. The dialogue for ending 3 would make Fang say she's been with other guys but Aeon is far more special than the Allosaurus dickwad she lost her V-card to. This would cause an outcry in the 4chan community, and when it was fixed in the next patch, it would create the character Schizo-chan, which, funny enough, would be one of the main characters for a popular Snoop game mod called Puppet Pals. The other patch of note was patch 8, which would be also their last one. This patch wouldn't be as grand, but it would allow the Spanish option for the game, allowing a new boom in popularity in the Snoop game community. Most notably, with One Hut Leo, bringing Snoot Game to the Latin American community and Rango Gamer spreading it to the Spain community, with the community to this day still being one of the biggest active communities. After the release of Snoot Game, Kevamon would release two other short visual novels like She's a Bit Sluggish, with She Likes You a Lot released first in February 2022 and A Star in Her Eyes released in August of 2022. Both visual novels would have characters for their next game they would announce back in November 28th, 2021, called Exit 665, which is a turn-based RPG intended to be their first legitimate game in the development world. The game has yet to come out yet, but you can read up more about it in the description box. Their next big game would be announced would be on March 5th, 2022, called I'm Wanny Hug That Gator. The game would have their main concept art released back on July 6, 2021 and would start out as a Snoot game mod, which the makers of the Olivia mod would eventually be taken under the wing of Capemon Studios for the creation of a full visual novel. The game would be fully revealed on March 3rd, 2022 with their planned release date in the fourth quarter of the year. Though it wouldn't have been released, as told by a dev, the animations and CGs wouldn't have been up to the quality of the demo that was released the next year on May 16th, 2023. Since the demo, there hasn't been talk about when the next release window would be announced, but the communities would create a meme saying, Wani, just a week away. Well, that has been a long and fun lesson, but that is where today's lesson will end for today. Again, if you want to learn more about a topic with another lesson, feel free to leave it in the comments box along with how you enjoyed today's lesson. Other than that, this is the end of today's lesson, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. Class is dismissed.
like to say fuck abib fuck the jannies and we're all gonna make it she might not be real but these feels are why isn't fat 